Well, you saw a little bit of this at the beginning of this broadcast. The man in charge of the Indiana State Police issued an emotional response late this afternoon to accusations of a cover-up in the flora arson that killed four young girls. Those accusations are coming from the NAACP this morning. Tonight, Eyewitness News reporter Rich Van Wyk has reaction to all of this from the family of the girls, and he joins us now live in studio. Rich. And Marie, I've never seen the superintendent this shaken. The Indiana NAACP president didn't mince words this morning, alleging a police cover-up and complaining no one has been brought to justice or talking to the victim's family. The president of the NAACP calls the situation distressing. Barbara Bowling Williams claims the case has been bungled and the apparent lack of progress and information from detectives makes it smell of a cover-up. She promised the civil rights organization would push state and local officials for answers and more attention. I'd give my life to find out who killed those little girls. An emotional state police superintendent, Doug Carter, denied allegations of a cover-up or a botched investigation. The notion that we will not do everything within our power, within right and left limits, of what we can do legally, morally and ethically, is just simply wrong. It's been almost a year. The early morning fire claimed the girls' lives as they slept. At first, the case was considered an accident. Then it was ruled arson. Then a private fire investigator claimed the conclusions were wrong. For the family, it has been a painful, frustrating, and confusing ordeal. I don't think it's really been ignored as much as it has been botched. And I just think that when you make mistakes, you just take your time and, and figure them out and let us know something. No, not let us find out on the news that this happened or that happened. We found out it was arson on the news. News that the death of four young girls was not an accident, but murder. The reward for information leading to the girl's killer is less than $10,000. Community members are getting ready to sell cookbooks to raise more money. The superintendent sounds willing to meet and work with the civil rights groups. John, we'll see what happens. All right, thank you. Rich Van Wyk tonight. Now, we've been following this case since the fire happened on November 21st of last year. Originally, the state's fire marshal's office said it did not believe foul play was involved. But this January, an arson investigator announced the fire was intentional. That investigator resigned in June. Also that month, the state police confirmed that they were looking into a person of interest, but so far have made no arrests in the case. 13 Investigates has dug deep into the questions surrounding the handling of the Flora fire case. We've uncovered emails and tracked the changes in leadership throughout the investigation. To read and watch those in-depth stories, go to WTHR.com investigates.